Everybody, welcome back tonight to another episode of A History Of Series 3 uh, with the Epic of Gilgamesh this week. We have been lucky enough this week that uh, Santi the Sian has jumped in. He wanted to have a wee go and have a chat with Richard. So, yeah, we're all open here. Everybody's welcome. So, of course, Santi was welcome. Richard, if you want to give a wee introduction to yourself and let everyone know who you are, and then we'll go on to Santi. Certainly. I'm Richard. How you doing, guys? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Santi, yourself, um, you've just joined the community. Your channel's not up and going at the minute, but what is your plans for the channel coming? Uh, it's mostly going to be D&D stuff. I'm doing a little tournament in there, like PvP player, uh, PvP player displayer. I'm also going to be doing the conversion stories, but the idea is to do some in Spanish to reach the, the Latino community. And uh, also, like, do certain interviews with whatever, whoever wants to do an interview. <laughs> you know, but ma mainly, like, D&D &D and the conversions. <laughs> and that's it. Sorry, I'm just looking at the chat. I think Critical Cripple's being an asshole and pretending that he can't hear me. I, I hope everyone can hear me. <laughs> it's the video all coming through and the audio all coming through, 5x5 five five or whatever it's called. Please let me know in the chat. Dave, you're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> well uh no point hanging about as we all can uh usually go with richard your wonderful voice we will uh, let you read santi i know it's your first time here if you feel anything you want to address jump in politely and uh, other than that richard will get to a point where he's finished with his, his story and then we usually just scream alien overlords right on uh, it, it can be okay. semi-politely. It doesn't have to be horribly politely. Just say just a second or throw your hand up or something we can see you and we'll stop uh, whatever thoughts you have. I think that um, between Math Pig and you, we cover a lot of what the side chat would want to say about the things I'm asserting about the text. So that's that's good. It's in, It's encouraging. Yes, well, as I said Thank to you in the email, Richard, Shanti was looking forward to actually maybe having a conversation, just the two of you, you know, maybe in your channel or his channel or got into it a wee bit. So the best way to do that is to, you know, break the ice, as they or say, both. and get to know someone. So, Right on. Uh, so um, assuming we have the right page, and I wouldn't know. Yeah, I went uh, and checked. The gods <laughs> were frightened by the flood <laughs> and retreated, ascending to the heaven of Anu. The gods were cowering like dogs crouching by the outer wall ishtar shrieked like a woman in childbirth the sweet-voiced mistress of the gods wailed the olden days have a last turn to clay because <clears throat> sorry about that because i had a little bit of nervousness hit me out of nowhere because i said e oh that does help because i said evil things in the assembly of the gods how could I say evil things in the assembly of the gods, ordering a catastrophe to destroy my people? No sooner have I given birth to my dear people than they fill the sea like so many fish. The gods, those of the Anunnaki, were weeping with her. The gods humbly sat weeping, sobbing with grief. Their lips burning, parched with thirst. Six days and seven nights came the wind and flood, the storm flattening the land. When the seventh day arrived, the storm was pounding. The flood was a war, struggling with itself like a woman writhing in labor. The sea calmed, fell Wait, still. Hey. The whirlwind... Richard, Santi would like to address something. They say that the storm was like a woman in labor. That's what it says? Now, Santi, just for, you said to me earlier you're doing uh, research. Was that watching past episodes? You have been here watching. You were here last week and stuff. You know what we're talking about, yes? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> right, go on ahead. Yes, I, I, watched, I watched the last one and I watched in Gilgamesh, but I was like the, the, compare, the, the comparison was like in, to a uh, uh, woman in labor. Yes. Right? So does that, like, is that like, is that literal in for or like uh, like move on move on like I, i'll articulate the question it's just... i think Oops, it's sorry. just expressing that um the waters were very tumultuous uh very active uh hitting against fighting against each other uh, fighting so against compare, themselves i mean right they're comparing to the violence of uh let's say like a birth 
like the violence of the storm. Yes. Right, like all that struggle. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Ooh, I like this. <laughs> Go. Sorry. The sea calmed, fell still. The whirlwind flood stopped up. I looked around all day long. Quiet had set in, and all the human beings had turned to clay. The terrain was as flat as a roof. I opened a vent, and fresh air, daylight, fell upon the side of my nose. I fell to my knees and sat weeping. Tears streamed. Where did it go? Tears streamed down the side of my nose. I looked around for coastlines in the expanse of the sea. And at 12 leagues, there emerged a region of land. On Mount Nimush, the boat lodged firm. Mount Nimush hold, held the boat, allowing no sway. One day and a second. Mount Nemosh held the boat, allowing no sway. A third day and a fourth, Mount Nemosh held the boat, allowing no sway. A fifth day, a sixth, Mount Nemosh held the boat, allowing no sway. When a seventh day arrived, I sent forth a dove and released it. The dove went off, but came back to me. No perch was visible, so it circled back to me. I sent forth a swallow and released it. The swallow went off, but came back to me. No perch was visible, so it circled back to me. I sent forth a raven and released it. The raven went off and saw the waters slither back. So it basically it, is the flood story. Oh, yes. Absolutely. So is it, is it the same as the Christian one? It is very, very similar. Uh, even to the point where the only bird not released in the right. Christian story is is the uh, the little what was it a swallow? A swallow is not released in the Christian story, but both of these birds are. Well, it could just be I mean you know like a different translation of of the bird in Spanish. It's an actual like it's a white pigeon, the like in the story like it's like that's the the bird that does it. And then uh, and I hear us like a. I think I was watching the documentary that I think Matt brought in another episode when they recreated the, the little arc that turned out to be rounded, the one that is like all sides the same thing, right? And they say that this story pretty much comes from a big flood on that area. That it seemed like because it was the world to the people in this area. Mm, yeah, yeah. A lot of people were. postulate that to try to make it more possible, but I don't think that's wise and it's out of context in the text. In which one of the decks um well actually it would be it would be inappropriate in this one as well as the christian bible but like if, excuse me if it sounds wrong but like for me it kind of sounds like almost verbatim this is the same story it Besides is verbatim, like the, verbatim the same story yes and so like where's the the mistake you know like and these are all this all these all the scriptures come pretty much from the same area where this flood happened right well, so, if this like, goddess is claiming birthright over all the earth and all the children of the earth are her children and the flood happens to all her children, then it follows it was the whole earth. Well, not, but it, the, the myth only comes from this area. That's sure, but think. we're trying, that's yeah, trying to make idea. it, that's trying like to make it, it historically yeah. accurate or historically Exactly, possible. yeah, like, like around whole long okay. like, ago would have been this, like, flood. Yeah, yeah, well, I think that the general interpretation that you're going with, Santi, is what a lot of people believe, that it was just a local flood that was expounded upon, you know, it's general knowledge. Well, I wouldn't say general knowledge, Richard will disagree with me in that, but I would say that there's a general yes. consensus in the scholarly field and in the history field that the idea is that it was a local flood and that it was expounded upon because as you used your, the word yourself, it was the world to them. So by saying the world in the Bible or in this or whatever, it's the world mm -hmm. to them, but we don't necessarily yes. go down that route. Richard particularly doesn't use uh, the flood in relevance to water. Uh, Richard interprets the flood slightly differently. So Yeah, it's, it's, it's the tribes, right? Is it water? Or you could say water? tribes. I, I mean, by, by tribes... I would define that as all the people of the earth, especially as a large populace, like now. Is, is, it, is it a lot larger than before? 
there that's my, I'm possibly a conversation that you two would have on a later date because we will tangent completely off. <laughs> Why Stein. does that matter? I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, no, no. You're sorry. all right, Santi. Well, this is the thing. You know, get a pen and a piece of paper, write this shit down, and then whenever you and Richard have your conversation on his or your channel or whatever the crack is, then... Uh, yeah, you know, you just can compound upon that. and It's sort of like a wee get to get get to know you here tonight, you know. Uh, feel free, as I say, to jump in. And uh, if you're completely wrong, uh, I'll fucking tell you. <laughs> Thank you. So as, <laughs> as Santi pointed out, uh, both the dove, which would be a white pigeon, technically, is a dove, and the raven are in the Christian story. Now, Christians have a tendency to ignore the raven, um, I believe that the raven is talking about what is elsewise called the beast of Satan, and the dove would be Christ in this story. In this particular before, story or in the general interpretation? I'm, I'm sorry, I spoke over. Uh, I mean, uh, you're saying that the dove represents Jesus in this. Yes. So I'm asking, in this particular story or the story overall, that as in, would the dove represent Jesus in this or the dove represents Jesus in both this and the Christian Bible? Yeah. Oh, this and the Christian Bible. Um, that well, the, what it's talking about is them being sent out from heaven. That is, a spirit is put into a man, birthed onto the earth so that they have time to grow up, and all of that has to happen ahead of time in context of what's actually going on this is a man being told uh, this is gilgamesh being told the story by someone yes yes right so gilgamesh is the old god or the old jesus slash new jesus being told a story about a representation of jesus yes far too many jesuses yeah, I know it gets a little bit tiring with the t always talking about Jesus thing. No, 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 no. But what I'm saying is that in the story, Jesus is already being represented by one person. And then as we went along, it's, you know, two people. And now there's a, th like, <coughs> excuse me, sorry. The do I just think in this particular part, I, you know, I, mm -hmm. you're obviously welcome to your interpretation, Richard. But I think in this particular part, they're just talking about a story. And the dove is, you know, just one of the birds in the story. I don't think, like, there is what it's trying to portray and what it's trying to put across. I'd agree with you that it's not maybe literal. But I don't think that the dove is a representation of Christ in this. You know, I think it's just a metaphorical in that story to try, like a literary form, to try and put the story across. Oh, you're welcome to that. I love you either way. Um I think that the story of Christ dates well back before even these kinds of tablets and stories. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I understand that. I understand that. Okay. And I think if there's multiple Earths, as are demanded by these stories, and some of them very, very particular about that, then there could be the same story 23 times in a row, and that would be accurate. So oh, just three or four iterations right. expressing Christ as a lineage is not even very thorough. I'm not disagreeing with you on that, that the story can be told in lots of different ways and it can mean the same thing. I 100% agree with you on that, You know that it's possible. What I'm mm -hmm. trying to say here is in this story right now, as we're talking, there is on the page three representations of Christ going on at right. the one story in once. Like nobody does, they're not going to, that's you can't use three different things. It's just very confusing, you know. It's Santi just, had something. Go on ahead, Santi. Yeah, like I, I think like the simple way to put the question will be like it, it feels like they're telling him a story about himself that hasn't happened yet, but it, it, it's supposed to already happen for them to tell the story. Right. Certainly, the Book of Revelation is written in the same way. But you, yeah, but okay. Right. Well, we've all put our, we've all right. put our ideas forward. Uh, everybody's yep. got their yep. own point of view. Richard, mm -hmm. I will put it back across to your wonderful uh, voice with on a seventh day it arrived. We were at the beginning of the next page. It eats, it scratches, it bobs, but does not circle back to me. Then I sent out everything in all directions and sacrificed a sheep. I offered incense in front of the mountain ziggurat. Seven and seven cult vessels I put in place. 
and into the fire underneath or into the bowls, I poured reeds, cedar, and myrtle. The gods smelled the savor. The gods smelled the sweet savor and collected like flies over a sheep sacrifice. Just then, Bella Tilly arrived. She lifted, <laughs> she lifted up the large flies. Beads? Okay. Which Anu had made for his enjoyment. You gods, as surely as I shall not forget this lapis loosely around my neck, may I be mindful of these days and never forget them. The gods may come to the incense offering, but Enlil may not come to the incense offering, because without considering, he brought about the flood and consigned my people to annihilation. <clears throat> I really don't get the Lapis Lazuli reference yet. I mean, other than a precious gemstone, I really don't see what they're trying to say with that constant reference. Do you have any ideas on it, brother? Could it be somebody's name? Well, no, it's maybe it's just a sign of, you know, royalty, possibly. The fact is we know it as a gemstone, as you say, Richard, you know, it's fact that I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I, I'm generally not sure itself. It's possibly, you know, that everybody had gold back in the day and everybody had silver back in the day, you know. And if you go to certain areas of the world, like if you go to, for toxic to South America, they can actually trace back the trade routes because the people in the north used to use obsidian as a, as a like a means of, tra um, like money. And people in the south used to use gold and as the, you know, the trade and the things move. And the, you can use these things. So obsidian was important to them perhaps lapsaluzu is important to this area and just you know something that they find something that's relative i personally don't know myself it seems like a pretty pretty reasonable answer just the same though i'm gonna have to look into how they used it or what it meant to them to really understand that i think yes uh, if you look back at the the episode go watch mama's channel and anyone who doesn't watch mama's channel these are all dickheads but anyway go watch the one that had an episode with dr josh on it and he did reference a book richard uh, specifically for gilgamesh and uh, mm -hmm. it might be worth reading even I'll if you don't agree with the stature or don't agree with this you know where they're coming from it's definitely maybe worthwhile reading i'm sure it would be um dr josh is a very uh, centered and safe scholar um ba -ba -bum -bum, moving on then see to me the the flood is of people and and it also brings the death of people and here we are uh seeing global warming and gmos and we poison the environment everywhere and i just wonder if that went on long enough and it, perhaps if we couldn't correct it, we'd do exactly that. We would kill ourselves off. Well, in it's this story, the possibility. in this particular story here, you said that the flood happens and it is the end of us. You know, he's on yeah, just, just is, for talk's sake. Just for talk's sake, we'll call this uh, Universe 7, right? This is our Earth. This is Earth 7, right? And uh, their version of Noah, the... The Inky, the, their version of Noah, whatever his name is, I can't fucking remember it right now. He's here on this earth after the flood has happened. So the flood didn't wipe out the earth. I know you're going to say it happened on a different earth, but we've also used the reference point that when people come from their other earth, they go up to heaven. They go to the spaceship. The bad people have ended up in cells, you know, I think from series one. And then in series two, there was mention of them being tortured and things like that. But they are all up in, sorry to be a dick, but they're all up in the spaceship. You know, they're all up there. They're not going to come back down again. The only person that transcends from the spaceship back down to the earth again is Jesus that leaves the God collective, as you have put it. So why right. is this guy on this earth? You know, it's making a reference point that it's happened in the past on this earth. Um, I, I think you made um, what I would consider a Christian assumption in your uh, synopsis there. Um, I, I don't think Christians are reading the text well when they say that Christ physically descends from the clouds and from heaven i'm not going by christian view at all i'm saying directly from you that you say the god collective is a group yeah. of the and then they have left and in this story that you have said 
Gilgamesh yeah. has come down and he's then transferring to en- you know, and Enki Do and moving across. It's only Jesus is the one that has left the spaceship. That's you that's told me that. Not a Christian it's, view. It's not it's not leaving the spaceship with flesh, it's descending as spirit to become a man on the earth. Okay, still I think only that's that a one mistake thing. right there. Yes, What's I that? understand the distinction, but this guy isn't Jesus. This guy okay. is Noah. Right. And Noah is on Earth 7, saying that this happened in the past on Earth 7. He can't be Jesus, because if we have the man in the story being Jesus, and the bird being Jesus, and the man he's telling it to being the new Jesus and the old Jesus, you just everybody's Jesus. <laughs> Not the raven. <laughs> the raven is yeah. definitely not Jesus. He got the point. He got the point. The raven is no Jesus. And I think the swallow represents lesser birds or uh, children of Jesus or the flock or people. But you get the point I'm trying to make. Back. The point What's I'm that? trying to make is the only person that can leave the spaceship heaven and come back to a new earth is the Christ. Everybody else that I comes can't, from. I just the... can't figure out why you're saying it that way. It's kind of it's kind of making my brain twitch. Um, whenever your earth is destroyed and you are sucked up into the spaceship and all of that's put aside and we grant all of that right I'm going to use euphemisms sure, sure. and I'm going to be fucking funny because it's entertaining but you get what I'm talking about when everybody's yeah. been straight up to the you know when they're all up in the spaceship the only person that's allowed to leave the spaceship in either consciousness spiritual energy physical whatever way you want to take it when they leave the spaceship, the only person that allowed to do that, to go to the new earth, is the Christ that has left the God Collective. But only the spirit of Christ, not flesh. Okay, perfect. Doesn't matter what it is. Only the spirit okay. of Christ. Right. So, we have a guy on earth, Noah, from this story, telling a right. thing, telling the story of the flood happening on this planet in the past. Well, happening on a planet in the no, past, yeah. No, no, yeah. no, no. The, This guy is not Jesus. This guy is not Jesus in any physical form or any spiritual form or anything like that. Right. He cannot but how would Jesus. you expect Jesus to ever read it if it wasn't written in like the, like the third person narrative? Okay. Let me just say this again. This guy is telling a story to Gilgamesh. Okay. So Noah yeah. and Gilgamesh are having a conversation. In your mind, Noah... You're, you're trying to tell me he has got this information. He's left and come from another planet, so he must be a Christ. He's now talking to Gilgamesh, who is a Christ, who is the reincarnation of the old slash new, the whole thing that's happened before Enkidu. So Gilgamesh is two Christs look, talking look, to a Christ about a story a representing a Christ club. and a bird. Think, think of it as a men's club where you're always getting a new member in, but you only get a new member at each end times. And the men's club is what we call God. Yes, I understand your God Collective. The whole point I'm trying to make is you have okay. now two people on the same earth that have yeah. telling a story. You're saying that Gilgamesh is Christ. Yeah, well, Enkidu becomes a Gilgamesh God. He yeah, was but, Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything that's happened before in the series. But right now, as it stands, Gilgamesh, the person in the story as it stands, is Christ. And he's talking to a person who has knowledge of something that happened before. Well, that person must be a Christ. So he's sitting talking to himself again. No, he's is... talking to his brother. He's not talking to himself, really. So there's now three Christs in the history line of this earth. There is the Noah would... version, there's the Enkidu version, and there's the Gilgamesh version. So three Christs have been allowed to leave the God. You forgot Thor, there. Buddha. It gets worse if you want to if you want to like do it do it that way, not within just one story. I mean. But... No, no, no. The point I'm trying to make is what you've said before is whenever things happen and you go up and you become part of the God Collective, the new well, the earth Christ is there, does, yeah. then Christ comes down and either, you know... No, 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 not in that order. That, but stop right there. That's the problem. That's what I keep trying to say. That's the wrong order. Right. The, the earth is destroyed and everybody has went up from Earth 6. We have now moved right. on then to... They go to Earth 7... Right, and and that that is allowed to move forward in time and make their own mistakes and need rescued mostly from themselves, and that's when a, a certain person on that who already lives there, yep, 
is selected to do the job of the Christ, and that's why he's anointed at the baptism. Okay, right. So that was the person, and through the story that we have been going through, either representing Gilgamesh at the time or Enkidu at the time, we have established now that since Enkidu is dead, we are only left with Gilgamesh. So this person that was born here, that's lived here before, right, is now the Christ. This is Gilgamesh. He's in a room having a conversation with their version of Noah. He is telling a story of something that has happened in the past on a different planet. He cannot have yeah. knowledge of that. Why not? He, he's been through it. This guy is telling the story of being through it. This man right. that he is talking to has been through the flood. According to you, it destroys the earth. According to this story, it doesn't. It was just in the past. If this guy right. had survived through it, and as we will read, he does survive. This is why he's immortal. This is why Gilgamesh is looking him out. He has survived right. it. Right. He is now on Earth 7. He came from Earth 6. If he came from Earth 6 and is now on Earth 7, he's a Christ. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I think I understand what you're saying. Yes, I'm I saying think, that you I have one Christ who is actually two Christs well, talking to a really man who's Christ about a bird who's Christ. Point. Okay, Uno pished him. The, <laughs> That's the guy. The, there you go. The boat guy. Right. Um, would he be another recollection of Christ within the same story? Or is he just a storyteller? I think is the question there. Is that right? No, the, the question I'm... Sorry, Santi, I've been talking for a while. Just let me say this one last time and then I'll put it across. Maybe you can explain it better. Sometimes it needs a, someone to come in and, and point things out. But the point I'm trying to say is you have Gilgamesh and Enkidu yeah. who are both Christs. Now you're yeah. saying Gilgamesh is that Christ. So you've had two. We're now in one. And then you're talking to a Putnipishtim who has got this knowledge from another planet. So in my interpretation, if he can be on six and now on seven, he must be a Christ. So you've got two Christs talking to another Christ. And in the story, he's using a representation of a bird. And you're saying that's Christ as well. So we've two Christs talking to another Christ who's telling a story about a Christ. Well, I think he's teaching the new Christ is what this is all about. Um, Oh, and, hold on. And, Gilgamesh was teaching Enkidu and then became the new Christ. And now there's another guy teaching another person. So this is now going to become three Christs in one? Well, I think this is would be the, the new Bible to the new earth is where this just started off. And when it recalls the story again, it's like writing another Bible for another earth. I understand that. Okay. But then we're, we're, there's so many, like if you leave six and get to seven, you're a Christ. Okay. Plus the yeah, one that's okay. grown up on seven that becomes seven's Christ. So you've got the old and the new. Right. We've been through this before. We use the analogy of the manager training up a, an assistant manager and then sacking the assistant manager. Right. But <laughs> You did. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that was my analogy, right? So we've got this guy funny, who's actually. training, and now he's moved on in the story. Gilgamesh, he's went through all these epics. He's the new manager that was the old manager, whatever the fuck interpretation. There was two Christs, and now there's one. Now he's met another guy. Yeah, but that never ends. No, but this guy's just telling the story about the flood. A put the pistol is literally only the flood. He's not going to save, you know, it's it's... You're, there's too many Christs. It's Santi, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are you getting what I'm getting? Yes. Like my, my question is, what does what does it make them Christ? Like or like for why for what I gather, right? For the the, the, the universe and the Christ and the as a short okay, version, so, right? Knowing that you've not been yeah, here, yeah. just to give a short version, Christ yeah. to jo to Richard is a job title, is a position, not a person. Yeah. It, no, no, I get it. But yeah. like, if if I'm a manager, right? Like this user manager thing, my job has certain like um, obligations that I had to fulfill before I leave. Like I used to be a manager in a store, I had to come up in the store, I had to at, like the people that come into the store, I had to like charge them, and then at the end of the day, I close the store and I go home, right? But that's because like and that will make me the manager, right? And so what I'm lacking. Like, like to see here is that the the guy that is compared to Moses, right? The guy that Gilgamesh went to find in in this place because he had whole, whole immortality for what I got. Not Moses, no. Right? Noah. Okay. 
sorry, no, the 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 so bow dude, okay. right? So yeah. he doesn't really fit the the manager position. Thank you. Because he's not a he's not a, even in like a, like I see him being compared to other messiahs and Christ, like the whole Noah guy, right? The guy from the boat. But he's mm -hmm. not, you know, like he's not. He doesn't come from holiness. Like right. he's not. Like, he's not a demigod. He's like right. he's like just like a regular dude to build a boat, like by divine command. And then he went and he he survived and the you know like and he kept, kept on living in that world. That was not the end of the world. It was the end of living animals in the story. It didn't uh, they, it destroy society, but the world was still there, right? Right. So like that's a different manager from the one that was crucified and you know and the rapey I, Christ, which is the uh, what Gilgamesh, the rapey Christ Gilgamesh. Like he, he's a little forceful sometimes. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know Gilgamesh. Uh, you know like he's not exactly all love and peace like the other managers per se. So you not only you have like five different managers in the same story, right? Like even if they're training or there's there's always been a manager, right? From yeah. the beginning of Diamond, there's always gonna be a manager. But they all seem to be existing at the same time, but not because there's only five on Earth seven now. No, like in Earth Seven we have so far. Yes, we're on Earth Seven. <laughs> we're on Earth Seven. And so we have Gilgamesh is a is a Christ, is a manager. Let's go with manager. Because okay, so Gilgamesh is a manager. His best friend is a manager, right? The guy that died. He was a Christ too. Yeah. Inkadu. Inkadu was a okay. And so now the Noah version, Ishmu, Ishmu, whatever. I'm gonna call him Ish. So Ish is Noah, right? So that's three Christ in the same story. But at, at what I, point I, I, I they became manager? Why Noah is Christ in your view? I don't. I don't get that. Because he has information uh, and survived the flood. And according to you, the flood is the end of the earth. And if you survive the end of the earth... Noah sends out the okay. raven and the dove. Noah is not the raven or the dove. <coughs> Ra uh, Noah would be a representation of God, that God builds his own heaven, Noah builds his own ark. Yes, we understand uh, that, but the point we're trying uh, to put across is the fact that Noah has the knowledge of Earth-6 being destroyed, according to you, because that's what the Flood is. Of course he would. Yeah, well, you're saying, of course, and we're having trouble understanding why a man... I don't, know. I, don't understand. I don't understand why that doesn't make sense. That's the part I can't get. Because you have explained before that if a person survives Earth-6, Earth-5, Earth-4 being destroyed and can go to heaven and either they're physical, they're conscious, or whatever the form is that leaves the spaceship, that person must be a Christ. Wait, 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 wait. Why Why do you think Noah leaves heaven? Because he's now on Earth-7 talking to Gilgamesh. It's just heaven hovering over the, the population of the people. Heaven doesn't physically touch the Earth at any point, although it's in the atmosphere. God, God a collective, never comes out of it at all uh, until uh, they, they release supplies like animals and plants and water and atmosphere onto the next earth well this is going against because you've said when we what? what's that you said earlier that you know with gilgamesh and enkidu it was the old jesus helping the new jesus you know it, it was a specific one-on-one -on -one thing they're on the yes. earth they're going through this they have attacked trees to get or attacked trees the big guy you know that attacked hammer you know the big that is they've, They've That's been the together. Yeah. They have existed together. It's the same as Jacob wrestles with the angel. Uh, he's innocent, and he he needs to be like shown the proof that he needs, and yep. and then he fights with it, and he, he doesn't really get it at first. And it's the last one who did the job who's training the next one to do the job. Exactly. And when you say manager of the store, it's not one manager of the store. Oh, it's, no, no. It's, Every low-level manager becomes part, and they stay in the store. They become part of high-level management, but they never leave. That's that. Okay, then the manager analogy doesn't work. You can't have like I'm like. Sure. Yeah, no. I, but the thing is that you can't have six managers. At well, the in same this case, time. you do. No, you I, I, I understand. That's why I'm okay. saying like analogy doesn't work because you can't have six managers because manager entitles that well, I need to manage you. You need to learn from 
this one manager yeah, the, the point, in the order Pritchard, to become a manager. Yeah, I, I, The point that I'm trying to get now is you've only mentioned now that they never leave the spaceship. So I'm having to look at everything back and forth and going, they're, they're talking to people over the phone. They're not actually with them there. They physically went through all these things. And we have discussed right, them being through these battles. We have discussed it. So, so the Christ on earth is actually going through this battle by himself with a headset on talking to God in the spaceship. That's close. That's good. Yeah, right. that works. Yep. Never mentioned that before. We have been talking. I'm sorry with, it hasn't come up. It, it, they've physically been attacking <laughs> things, and you didn't think it was poignant to say that one of them wasn't there, one of them's a headset talking to them. Well, I also don't think that Jacob physically wrestled with the angel of God either. But we're not talking about that, and I have no knowledge in that, and we're not going through that, and I don't know the, I know the story, but we're not talking uh, okay. about that. What, I, what I'm saying is these battles and fights are not physical fights. They're, they're not physical fights at all. They're all, they're all um, finding resolution for, um, what do they call that dichotomy where you're both flesh and spirit? Um, dualism. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the individual being solved his dualism. So on the earth, seven, right now, there is yeah. a person, Christ. I believe so. He's somewhere here. Okay, but in the story, we're talking about in the story. In the story, we're on Earth 7. And yeah. the, which one of these Christs is the one physically on the Earth? Is it Enkidu? Is it Gilgamesh? The lowest level one. Pardon? The one of the lowest level. The one that has to be schooled. Can you just pick out a name? I'm asking you, out of the three that I'm naming. Well, at the beginning of this, it was Enkidu. And then it changed to Gilgamesh. No, Gilgamesh was the last Enkidu. Yes, we've been through that. I'm asking you directly now, in the story that we are reading, there is <laughs> yeah. bound to be, this is happening on a Earth. May it be six, may it be five, maybe it be fucking 52. It is happening on an Earth, this story. Are we in agreement? No, I think it's recalling the whole story again, actually. Recalling the whole story that happened on what? On an Earth. On some other Earth. Right. So it's recalling a story that happened on another Earth, telling someone on a Earth. Not yet. It's not necessarily telling anyone right now. It's literally telling a story. Somebody that like, it's telling a story. There is yes, but it's a boatman talking to Gilgamesh. Right. So can you just pick someone out of this story list that I'm giving you? A putting a piston, yeah. whatever his name is, Enkidu yeah. or Christ. On the earth that is represented in the story, which one of them is the physical person who was born here and grew up here in the story right now? Enkidu's obviously dead, so that leaves Gilgamesh or a, a put in a no, piston. It, it doesn't have to be talking to a physical person on the earth. It doesn't have to be. Like I said before, this looks to me like the writing of a Bible. This story be, has to have happened on the, in heaven, not here. Okay, are we in agreement that the flood happened on Earth 6? Uh, flood happens every Earth, yes. Flood happens every Earth, right. When they move to the next Earth, we're now on Earth 7 in Gilgamesh, and they're telling the story. We are on right. a physical Earth telling the story about what happened to one before, yes? On a physical, yes, during the story of Enkidu before he becomes, no, no, before he dies, yeah. So everything after happened, Enkidu dies is what? Dies. What? This, like, Richard, please. Like, it's, which one of the the people in this story is the physical person that grew up? Where we are in the story now, which one of these people is the person that physically was picked to be Christ from Earth 7? He's right now being called Gilgamesh. Okay, Gilgamesh is talking to a, a Utnapishtim. What is an yeah. Utnapishtim? What is his position in the story? He, he lives in heaven, and Gilgamesh is now in heaven, which is why he's about to get eternal life. Gilgamesh has been described as being in hell. Yeah, yeah, he does that too. That's true. It descends down into the pit, and then, then is elevated into heaven. We're in heaven. hell yeah. now. Yeah, we're in hell now. We've got the furry man. We've got it to depends the depends on your meaning of hell and how you take it and what people you're from. Okay. I mean, you said that at the start. You've said at the start we went through hell. At what point did we stop being in hell and now we're in heaven? Did he get? The, did the fairy man take him out of hell and now drop him off well, at heaven's door? Same as the fairy man crossing the river Styx. It's that transition from one world to the next. That's the fairy man. That's the the guy on the boat. 
okay, when big things like that, like if we're reading the story and we're in hell and in your interpretation, the furry man takes him from hell and takes him to heaven. But you can't, hold on, you can't look at it as Christian hell. It's not Christianity. Okay, I'm not, okay, we'll call it A and B, okay? With, regardless of the name, we've got heaven, which can be A, B, C, whatever the fuck it is, or hell, it doesn't matter, it's just a name. They're two different places. Okay. So he was well, in, he was in A, and then he left to get to B. Right, right. Okay, right. Do you see next time that he leaves B and goes back to A? Could you point that out to me? Wait, he's not going to go back. You don't. No one goes back. I, I'm just saying for represent. This is the thing that happened, Richard. Somebody left one dim- Like we were in hell, whatever it's called, okay. and now you're saying we're in heaven. You're you, like w- w- I never knew that we left hell. You didn't mention oh, that. You oh, never that, said their that. Their idea of hell wouldn't line up with like European idea of hell. It it's not the same what expression. It's called. It doesn't matter if it's called a Using a B. commonality of word, I'm saying hell because I don't have a choice right here. But their idea of the okay, let's let's say levels one, two, and three. Okay. And let's call earth let's call earth two yep. and let's call hell level one Perfect. and heaven level three let's just do it that way right. so well, earth's can, in the middle okay if i can just interrupt really quickly from my using yeah. that analogy i'm going to try and steal man you here using your analogy we always were in level two he went through he fought the scorpions or whatever they were and got into level one then the furry man right. furried him from level one to level three that's that's pretty close yeah i think okay right i did not see that in the story and you never told me that that happened in your interpretation. I'm sorry I'm bad at this. Pardon? I'm sorry that I'm bad at this. No, no, no. I no, am no. bad at this. I'm, sorry. I'm just trying to explain my confusion because you're telling me now that we're in heaven, which is level three, and I don't know how the hell we got there from level one to level three. That's, a, that's okay. When people die, they don't understand how they got there either. Okay, that's lovely, but we're having a conversation. We're not dead. I'm just wondering in the interpretation of the story. <laughs> Um, uh, okay, so I, I mean, I I don't want to assume that I really understand what you're saying, but I think I do. I am lost um, at how we got to level three from level one. You're just telling me now that we're in level okay. three, and I'm lost how well, we got there. I'm lost in okay, the interpretation. It's not for the general population. It's for the new hero. The whole thing is for the new hero. Th- th- that's okay. I'm still confused at how we got from I level just, one to on, level hold three. On, hold on, hold on. Uh, and it, it's it's explaining things at first teaching then he does it then he dies then he ascends you know and uh and part of his ascension is going down to hell before ascending up to heaven that says that in the bible right? yes i get that okay it didn't say so, it in this did not say it in this it said in this he went to ha- hell and then he was on a boat and he got to where right. he was going right um but then as soon as he's in heaven, he's got a new job to do because he's part of God. And part of that that job would be making a new earth. There'll always be a new heaven and a new earth. And making a new Bible for those people. For But, you know, there's different Bibles for different people. Some, they call it different things. Um, so that this looks to me like them discussing or him becoming enlightened about the full paradigm um that that's exactly what's going on so this is an, another like a um, a synopsis or a reiteration or a, a debrief yes i totally understand the whole that. thing yeah i've got i've got that yeah yeah he's been up moved he's been moved to heaven happens, he's talking yeah. to an, another christ or whoever it was that's telling him what happened before so that this yeah. one can then write his version of the bible to propagate the story onto the new earth totally get all that and but altogether, the whole thing is being is on this earth right now, which means it's to be read by the Christ who lives here now, so that he can understand all that stuff. Grant, one hundred percent, fine, totally okay. get that, right? I'm just going to say one thing, and then I'm going to hand it over to Santi. Totally understand where you're getting from. He's now raised heaven. He went on the boat or whatever it was. He got to heaven. He's now being taught what has happened before, so he can write his own interpretation of the story for the new earth. Totally understand Which all that. Which he reads from the earth. Boom. 100%. Granting you all okay. of that. Right? In the Bible, as you have referenced less than five minutes ago, Jesus goes to heaven, or sorry, Jesus goes to hell before he goes to heaven. 
It says that in the right, Christian right. Bible. Didn't say that in this story. You're interpreting that. Didn't Did say he, that. It said he, he got all the. That... It said he went to the hell, and he traveled across a lake to get into a deeper level to go to somewhere to talk to this person. It didn't say he changed and went to heaven. That's okay, your so interpretation of that. That's fine. So in in this structure, as opposed to like the Christian structure, like Earth would be position one, hell position two, and heaven position three. That's the way this is structured. Okay, fine. Whatever way it's structured, the story didn't say that he left one level. There was a big giant thing when he left well, Earth. How's to go everything to... all okay all of a sudden? No, he did. It was a massive thing when he left the Earth realm to go to Hell realm. He had to fight the scorpions. He had to do this, that, and the other. He had to do all these bad, you know, Skin these lions things in the wilderness yeah. and craziness. Yeah, to get to Hell. But to get to Heaven from Hell, all you need to do is get on a boat. Yeah, just a boop. Just, it just happens. And it was never mentioned. Yeah. No, it wasn't mentioned. It was right. it was not mentioned in any way that he was leaving one area and like one realm and going to another. In the story, it was portrayed that he was going further into the like further into the area. So you've arrived in America, you've got to New York, and you're get you know, you're heading towards Los Angeles, and all of a sudden you're now in fucking Paris. And you're like, How did you get to yeah. Paris? Oh, he got in a boat. I, I actually think that that's kept as a secret of experience for the hero, the Christ, as part of his initiation into God, that he stays alert during the crucifixion and death. He's alert and awake, you know, like conscious and stuff, which is really weird. And people don't do that while he descends into into hell, recovers the spirits that are going to be recovered. And ascends into heaven. We all know the Christian story. We're not talking about the Christian theme. story. We all know What's the that? Christian. We all know that Christian story. We're all main, main, most oh, okay. most of us here are that you know are of Christian denomination. That Jesus dies, he goes to hell. He gets all the people that have died before him because they can't go right. to heaven. He then grabs them up and flies them all up to heaven. We understand, you know. Right. We all know that but in the quote. My point time. is that that part's never written anywhere. Never is that part written anywhere how he gets from hell to heaven. That's never anywhere. Okay. He just instantly there somehow. Again, I'm not using the Bible. I'm not talking about the Bible. I'm trying to get off it by saying that we all know it. I'm talking about the story right, in right. front of us. It was not made explicit. That's what I'm saying. It was, it's not explicit. It's not explicit that he's went from hell to heaven. They didn't use the two words regardless of what the, they're called. In the Christian Bible, it does. In the description that you're using, you do. But in the story, they do not define A and B. They don't say heaven or hell. They don't say that he right. left A and went to B. They say that he went further into A. Well, I, I would have to look into it some that these people... Um, like the expression of Sheol as containing both heaven and hell. These people may have looked at it in that way, and that is an older way to look at it. That it's it's a it's like, are you all the way in the bottom of the valley in the desert? Oops. <laughs> what happened there? <laughs> no, it's a are, you, are you up on the mountain in the beautiful fields and green fields, or are you all the way on the top of the mountain? But it's all one area in some expressions. So I, I don't really know, and I'd have to look into that. It's it's the feeling that I get that they thought of it that way. Th that's all I'm trying to get to, Richard, is for you to say that. That it's your interpretation, oh. that it's okay. your putting this on the story to make it fit sure. what you're saying. It never explicitly like, said anywhere in the Gilgamesh story that he left A and went to B. He got on a boat and right. got further into A. You were adding right. leaving A and getting to B. You were adding that he is leaving hell and going to heaven. I agree with you. It's just not written there. Thank you. I just wanted you to say that. That's the entire thing. Because no, it's not written there. You're absolutely right. It's not written there. So is that an assumption? I think it's a necessary assumption, but yeah, it's an assumption. It's a necessary assumption to fit your story. Exactly. Yeah, but you know, as far as that goes, I mean, being a Christian European descent, I don't think of heaven and hell being all one place at all. So, no, like when I used to believe in like heaven and hell and all the stuff, 
it was it was devils like like Richard explains it like like you know like you have hell, then you have here right, and then you have heaven, like in the but then there's also like in the Catholic belief there was a little bit of like purgatory. Purgatory is now right? gone, I think. Did they not decide to get rid of it? Oh well, it still exists on, over there. You know that's that's what they send the like unbaptized children, but um, but like and then the whole boat thing comes from like the the underworld thing, kind of kind of like when Hercules used to go to the underworld in the you know like the old series, like yeah. in the Sheena series when they just took the boat over there. So you're saying like this this is like a transition like um like like they're transcending like that like I get it it's like the the mode of transportation through the levels, right? But is it always this boat? Because like not every people, religion. Exactly, because they, like the, the 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 dude in the in the in the boat, right? He can like in most stories he can deny passage as well, yeah. Like, unless we give him like a coin or something, right? So it's not really it's not like really like a proof or or a like, challenge for the hero as long as you can, like, all you had to manage to have is some change on you and he will take you <laughs> to wherever you need to go. You're like right. It, doesn't, right, it doesn't seem like a challenge to me for the hero or like a. You know, like a rite of passage. Like it's like I got in the bus. I got sixty cents. Can I get in? No, you have fifty-five. Oh, I stay here. You know, it's that's what it is to me. You know, like a transcending for the hero. Like he has done so much epic things. Like he 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 fought the giant scorpions. He he killed this tree and dude. He reached his right know. hand into his right pocket and pulled out a gold yeah. coin and, and like gave he, it to the boatman. Like, three... Yeah, yeah, exactly. And he handed a ticket and he was there. You're on to heaven, Gilgamesh. Go talk to Ishnu Ishnu or whatever his name is. Uh, but like, like, for what I got from the story, Ishnu Ishnu isn't like. I'm sorry, the uh, Noah. It's on. Uh, it's on a mountain. He's not in heaven. He's like, trying to reach where this guy is, right? So there's a lot of metaphor here. Like, 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 there's a lot of assumption that we're assuming that the boat took him to heaven, and then we're assuming that the mountain where this guy is it, it's heaven as well and then we're assuming that he's not the survivor of the story but he's also the representation of god to teaching the messiah the the christ because that's I, like I, I missed the question what was it okay um granted santi uh, english isn't your first language is it yes yes it's not it's not i'm sorry it's a second language so some of the words get missed you can tell because he said yes it is not <laughs> yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, that is, is just to give a wee shout out for uh you know, santi <laughs> as it's going he's hoping to do uh deconversion stories on his channel so uh in spanish so if there's yeah. anyone out there you know making it a wee bit more comfortable and a wee bit easier for them they'll be all yeah, i'd probably not watch that because cool. it's in fucking spanish but they'll be doing it <laughs> <laughs> it is a second language but, it, but that was my my whole main thing like who do we get from the the whole like it, it went in a rabbit hole like giving him some change into this being like the transition like how, how is he one of the challenges for him to you know to learn to be the christ or or whichever i think the same uh the the coin represents uh rite of passage you you use for whatever reason you have the right to pass and and I think that uh, the completion of the Christ doing his actual job is his coin. That's how he has the right of passage. And not everyone has the right of passage. That also would be true, uh, especially if you're talking about that particular job and, and that particular destination. And from what I understand, different religions break up even heaven in different ways to say, oh, there's there's this many levels of heaven itself. So not only do you have hell and then earth between and heaven above, but then you have all these different levels of heaven to go with that. Yes. So, you know, different... it, it gets pretty complicated depending on which expression you're talking about. Hmm. Okay. Okay. That answers my question. Uh, Tom, Tom, just if I can jump in, Tom, Tom has tagged me twice and I'm looking at your previous comment and your previous comment is I also like carrots. So if you could retype the one that the question is... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I can have a look. Well, right. While we're speaking to side chat, I would actually uh, speak to uh, Korag, Night Wolf, although it. I'm probably saying that poorly. Um, 
I, I think that, of course, it's going to sound like I'm just making stuff up to make it fit, of course. And it should sound like that. And your process is solid. You're you're thinking about that solidly. And I congratulate you. But I expect that of Korag Nightwolf. Um, Not a lot that of Korag. doesn't make it wrong. That doesn't make it wrong that it looks to you like I'm just squeezing stuff in everywhere I can. Uh, okay. Um, and ultimately, the reason I'm personally convinced that I've adopted the correct view of these texts is because of that consistency, which actually sometimes makes novel predictions from within the religious story, which I, I've seen happen. I have a friend, I'm not going to mention his name right now, uh, who has read to me stories I've never heard. And I was able to tell him the end of the story in the same language he was using. In the same kinds of words. So you spoke so, a different language without any training. No, I said the same. I used the same kinds of words. Like in that story, the words, the word gum tree replaces Christ. Yes, but you in said you said it to story, him in his the language. single man replaces the beast of Satan. What's that? You said to him, you said it to him in his language. No, we were both speaking English. I said, and the story is going to end with this 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 and this in those characters they're going to do this 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 and this uh mama has just sent me a message that she did type in the chat which was relevant at the time but the lapsu latsu that you were mentioning at richard earlier yeah yeah that'd be great uh, it was used to make the tablets which is why they wore it around their neck because it's a connection to the continuation of the story oh thanks mama that was cool awesome so it's like knowing that okay, there's so a book it's, and carrying it's like a little wearing a book. religious symbol then. Well, well, maybe not so. I, I, the reference I was going to say was uh, if anyone ever seen the movie Enemy Mine, it is something similar to what. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, Richard. He carried the little that, book yeah. around his neck. Now, in that particular story, the book was religious, not the actual carrying it around his neck being religious. But the words in the book was religious. So I think that the lapsu lapsu may not be, well, it could be actually a, a religious interpretation, but it's the material, it's the thing, it's, it's a representation of the religion without being religious, if you know what I mean. Like the, from enemy sure. mind, the book is the religious thing. Carrying a thing around your neck isn't religious. They don't care about it being carried around their neck and being shared and shown, but they carry it there so it's always with them. The book right. is religious. It's not the carrying it around their neck that is religious. Like what would be with Catholics and stuff, you know, carrying the cross around your neck. That's a representation of, you know, your religion. But like for toxic, you can carry your wedding ring on a necklace because you work in a garage and you can't lose your finger. It doesn't mean that the wedding ring being carried around your neck is religious. It means that the wedding ring is important to you. I, I get it. I get. I get it. Yeah, I can see that. That makes sense. Right. Well, I went off on all of that because Manda literally sent me one sentence. But from that one sentence, you get a Robbie round. <laughs> <Thanks, laughs> right well, you do know her pretty good, so I'm sure you can see intent in what she writes. Yeah, I still fuck up all the time. I'm a man. Women are always better. You haven't learned that yet, Richard. <laughs> Santa, you're I'm married. You know this, yes. That's why yep, I'm a yep, monk. Yep, yep. <laughs> I just gave up, became a monk. Just nothing. <laughs> right. Back to the story. I don't even know what fucking line we're on now. <laughs> that was great, though. <laughs> Richard, what line are we on? What, what was the last thing we said there? Uh, the gods smelled the favor. Yes. Sheep sacrifice. We did the beads. Yeah. Yeah, that was... Yeah, I'm right. trying to... Yeah. You found it? Where is it? We'll, we'll start off the la lapsu lapsu around my neck. Okay. Uh, may I be mindful of these days? And Oh, we did that. Uh, in incense offering. Elil can't show up. The just then, Elil, er Enlil arrived. He saw the boat and became furious. He was filled with rage at the Agigi gods, which I think sounds silly. <laughs> Where did I, a living being, escape? No man was to survive the annihilation. Nanurtu spoke to, to Valiant and Enlil, ha, say, saying, who else? Mm, good time to move it. Who else but Ea could devise such a thing? It is Ea who knows every machination. 
La spoke to Valiant Enlil saying, It is yours, O Valiant One. Who is the sage of the gods? How? How could you bring about a flood without consideration? Charge the violation to the violator. Charge the offense to the offender. But be compassionate lest mankind, lest mankind be cut off. Be patient lest they be killed. Instead of your... Oh, there's two words instead right there. Which one's right? Instead of your bringing the flood... Bring no, on. I'm on the wrong one. We're here. Instead of your bringing on the flood, oh, would that a lion had appeared to diminish the people? Explanation mark. See me here. That's weird. Instead of your bringing on the flood, would that a lion had appeared to diminish the people? And Instead then, of your bringing on the flood, would that a wolf had appeared to diminish the people? Instead of your bringing on the flood, would that famine had occurred to slay the land instead of your bringing of, on the flood would that pest this is exactly the same stuff in the same order with different yeah uh, i mean except for the wolf replaced by beast in the words beast of satan other than that this is the same thing in the same order well what i'm seeing um, here is instead of bringing the flood this is a person this is the person talking to the god saying you had loads of choices because I think from the interpretation that we well, got... That's an obvious reading of it, yeah. Yeah, I'm not exactly remembering the exact words, but, you know, the usual colloquial version is uh, they made too much noise. Man was too noisy, too yeah. awful. Yeah, you know, so... An excuse to get us off the planet, actually. Yeah, instead of bringing on the flood and destroying everybody, why didn't you bring, you know, a wolf and uh, diminish the people yes, that way? Yes, a diminish. Lion, a wolf famine and pestilence yeah, but the, the word that what exactly i'm trying to get to richard is what i'm trying to get to is the word diminish all right yeah. the flood destroys other right. different ways would have diminished so instead of destroying the evil people i i, I diminish the people get rid of just the people who are annoying you you brought the right. flood and wiped well, out that's a good everybody point. I think you're right. The word diminish here, I think, is appropriate also to other texts that I read, that it's a process of ascension into heaven. For instance, the first and second resurrection. Although a lot of people assume it's a, a millisecond in time, it doesn't read that way uh, consistently, but is a seven-year process of bringing people off the earth. So, yeah, diminish totally makes sense to me. So so now, to me, this is reading the second half of end times. Yeah, but you're adding that to your story days. as in the second half of end times. It literally says here, instead of bringing the flood. So instead of wiping out everybody, you could yeah. have just got rid of the bad people. Yeah, but then we'd be staying on the earth forever, and that doesn't make sense. In your interpretation. But in a normal right. interpretation of people reading it, they're like, why did you kill everybody? You could have just killed the bad people. It's a betrayal of who the God is. It's a betrayal. Oh, it's that's interesting. This is a typical atheistic argument. Uh, if I may, what I get from from that little sentence, right? Even though you guys say it repeats yourself, I don't remember the last one, but it's pretty much like for my layman, like I don't have that much knowledge on this. We're all laymen uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't but, have uh, a layman. Sorry. What I see, <laughs> what I see here is like this dude, right? Like the flood. It's like it's very universal. It will like just wipe out everything, right? And his guy is being like, you could have used all these things that could have targeted specifically the bad people. Like right. The, that's the, that's the interpretation that I get. Like it's like a straight out, like a dude yelling at the sky after like a storm and being like, you know, you could have destroyed any other car. Why? Why my car? You get it. Right. Like, that's, that's what I get from that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think that's uh, very scholarly. <laughs> I'm just trying to put across the point that this person is saying to them, to the God that wiped out everybody. You didn't have to wipe out everybody. You could have just wiped out the bad people. The only reason that a, a Putin Epistem survives is because a different God. Give him the boat and give him the knowledge and give him the foreknowledge. A different God in this story, not the same one in... In, like in Christian terms, but it was a different God that l allowed the human race to survive. And this person is like, why did you do that? You know, you could have just killed the bad people. If the God had have followed through the way it would have been without the other God stepping in, there would be no mankind whatsoever. 
Yep, that's consistent. It literally says instead of. That's, you know. Well, we need to check the original translation, but... Everything's went quiet. Everybody's just rereading. I'm watching Richard. <laughs> Richard's cogs are turning over, or else he's thinking in his mind, "Fucking Robbie's an asshole." And Santi, no, what, like, everything you said is consistent within what you said, and and actually very probably mainstream. Probably the majority of the people look at this story that way. Well, you I'm know okay with that. You know yourself, Richard. I am in no way a scholar. I'm a mechanic that works on fucking cars and keeps bees. You know, I, I spend most of my time outside running around in the dirt with the child, if I can. Uh, I'm just giving you the the can the view that I get reading it, thinking. Sure. In my, I think I have a logical mind, and this is the interpretation I'm getting from it. I know. I understand that. I think you do have a logical mind, and everything you said, I think, would be in keeping with scholarship. Absolutely. Santi, anything to add? On that uh, on that sentence? Moving on. Moving on! <laughs> right, let me just check. I'm going to check something right for you. <laughs> no, it's just silence. Like, so. Right, that looks like a lot of repetitive. Let's just keep reading and see if we can... Right, we think, will, uh, we'll go to the end of page 48, Richard, yes? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't have track. Uh, now then, deliver. It seems like we were at the end of 47 there. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. We'll do one more page because what looks to me uh, on page 49 is a lot of repetitiveness. So we will start with repetitiveness next week. <laughs> so we'll go to the end of page 48. Okay. That'd be fine. Can you see that all good? That's lovely. Can you can you go up to the bottom of forty seven, please? Thank you. Would that pestilent era had appeared to ravage the land? It was not I who revealed the secret of the great gods. That's something to be taken into consideration there. I only made a dream appear. Oh, sorry, I seen the end. Heard uh, the to Atrahasis. And thus, he heard the secret of the gods. Yep. That's all of 47 there. Um, hold, on, hold on. See, all of this is the revelation to uh, two people of the great gods. Specifically telling it from the perspective of the boatman to Gilgamesh. Right. Go on ahead. Right. Now then. Now then what? That's the next line. Oh, I thought you were being demanding. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking read the scripture, Richard. Come on. <laughs> oh, okay, that, that. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Now then, the deliberation should be about him. And Lil <laughs> went up inside the boat and, grasping my hand, made me go up. He had my wife go up and kneel by my side. He touched our forehead and said, and standing between us, he blessed us. Previously, Utanapishtim was a human being. But now, let Utanapishtim and his wife become like us, the gods. Let Utanapishtim reside far away at the mouth of the rivers. Oh, boy. Um, they took us far away and settled us at the mouth of the rivers. See, to me, mouth of the rivers means the beginning of life and yeah. our entire kind, which is made in heaven. So and it's like, oh, like saying, where did you get that? Just a few or could... water of everlasting life, mouth of the river. Mouth of the river means the beginning to you. Yeah, well, what's a, a mouth of a river? A mouth of a river a... is the end to me is where it joins the sea. It's where the water flows out into the sea, right. So the big collective of water is fed by the mouth of the river. That's right. Okay, so we're going to take this person that survived the flood and we're going to send him as far away from the mouth of the river. Right. So as far all, away all, as possible from... The beginning of the mouth of the river, that's okay. right. So we're going to send this Utnapishtim, this particular person, physically, who survived the flood, away from the mouth of the river. Right. They okay, so he can't be Christ then. He can't be Christ. Far. No, you're reading that wrong. They took us far away and settled us at 
the mouth of the river. The gods. Not took us away from the mouth of the river. That's not. That's exactly the opposite thing. No, I, you can say that that's exactly the opposite thing. It's also the previous line, and I literally read it. Let it out in the pishtim reside far away. Uh, are we at the mouth of the river. Oh, fuck off. Sorry. 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 I missed a comma. I missed a comma. It's okay. I'm just pointing out you missed a comma. Not it's English not like pig. Not English pig. Okay. Not, Eng- uh, not you know, not but English math pig. pig. Math <laughs> pig. That's right. We trust you on the math, brother. Yeah. I seem far away from the mouth of the rivers. Apologies. That is right, my right, fault. Right. Um, I can't complain. That's okay. That's okay. Uh, Darn, uh, Nephilim Free argued a half an hour on a comma, but never mind. Oh, I only Uh, had 10 minutes. That's good. Yeah, you were quick, actually. More like 20 seconds. (laughs) Uh, It's called rereading. Go ahead. I said it's just called rereading. Yeah. Nephi generally doesn't do that. He he reads and then screams. That was pretty much the, the experience I had, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Sandy, do you know of Nephilim Free? Nephilim Free? No, I do not. I will I don't bless learn. you. I will bless you with his YouTube channel link after this. No, no. Don't. Oh. No. I will go over there. Richard, He's is the is the conversation you had with him on your channel as well as on his channel? Um, I showed up on his channel. No, but what I mean is, do you have a copy of that? Yeah, that's on my channel, but it's it's uh it's blocked or stri- strike copyright strike, even though it was just me and him talking. So it's hmm. not available for someone to watch. So we're going to have to watch it in Nephi's channel. You would have to go to Nephi's channel to watch it. Yeah. Well, I would definitely recommend that not to support Nephilim Free in any way, but the conversation <laughs> that Richard had with Nephilim Free that's is terrible. just pure entertainment. It's come. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I'll go. I'll go over. I'll watch it, and I'll download it for you, Richard. Right. All right. Awesome. Moving on. Uh, Moving uh, on. Fair enough. <laughs> actually, I think the algorithm doesn't care which way you vote. Actually, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's let's finish up uh, this page here. Uh, where are we at, brother? I'm lost. Help me. Where's at the very top? He had my wife knelt by my side. He touched the forehead. Standing yeah, between us, he blessed us. Yeah, and yeah, the line so that I'm stuck on here. Yeah, and then we got to the mouth of rivers. No. Now no. then, who will convene the gods on your behalf? You may find the life that you are seeking. Wait. You must not lie down for six days and seven nights. Soon as he sat down with his head between his legs, sleep like a fog blew upon him. I just told you not to sleep. But Nopishtim said to his wife, Look there, the man, the youth, who wanted eternal life, sleep like a fog blew over him. His wife said to Udnapishtim, the faraway, touch him, let the man awaken. Oh, that gave me chills. All right. Okay. Um, Some guy fell asleep. Let him return safely by the way he came. Just to say, for me, some guy fell asleep, and then they went over and poked him, woke him up, and you got chills. Yes. Can you elaborate on your chills? I know with, uh, you know, it's, but can you elaborate on your skill? Sure. Uh, to me, this is, this is Rom hugging um, Hanuman or Christ realizing his father or the awakening that would happen, the enlightenment of Buddha. That's what this is to me. And it's a lot. Uh, there's a lot there to me. Well, I can understand. But... I, I I can understand from your interpretation and how you feel about how where you are now that a representation of an awakening can definitely do that to you. I'm not seeing it in the story, but I can understand your personal experience. Like I, you know, people can listen to a musical song and it means something to them. And some other person can listen to it and go, "That's fucking bullshit." Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, we're all a little bit different. I guess that's why we can be complimentary is because we are different. Um, let him return to his land by the gate through which he left. Let's go back to heaven. But Nepishtim oh, said, this is a recap. Let him return. This is to a the... recap of the whole thing, no, of no, the no. life of the hero. Okay, the person survived the flood. 
and then went to heaven. And you said, return to heaven. They've went to heaven. It says, let him return to the land by the gate from which he left. So right. let him go back to earth is the interpretation. No, 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 no. We don't come from earth, according to these stories. According to your interpretation of these stories. But in the story that's happening now, he survived earth being flooded. He then went to heaven and they are telling him to go back to where he came. So they're telling him to go back to earth. It's a recap of what already happened. He's returning from whence he's returning to the ground from whence he came. Return to the ground from whence you came. Okay. That is that is never mind the flesh. The flesh is unimportant. It's just material. It can be replaced. But the spirit is made in heaven, returns to heaven. Oh, I understand your interpretation. You're saying oh, he okay. came from. I, I, sorry if I'm rude. Like, but sorry. he came from heaven. He's going to return from heaven. Ashes to ashes, okay. dust to dust, and all that crack. But the right. storyline, the timeline in the story, is saying he's on earth. He survived the flood. He went to heaven, and they're telling him to go back to earth. In <laughs> no. <laughs> in in the story here they're telling him to come back like you nodded right up until the point where i said go back go and back it said him yeah. let him return to the land by the gate from which he left although there's christians who would uh, agree not, with you that the their bible is saying that i'm not talking about the bible santa are you seeing where i'm seeing are you seeing the progression in the I story see, i see what you're saying so that i just the, don't think that's what it's trying to say Santi, go on. But, Get your voice out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, is the story like right now, like when they go to the whole mouth of the river and stuff like that? That is the beginning, but the end of because it's the it's the end of the river, but the beginning of the ocean, right? Pretty much. Well, if the sea or the flood is people, big people on a big amount of people on the earth, then the mm -hmm. mouth of the flood is the gates of heaven where spirits come to be living on the earth. That's the source. Which is why it would also be, you know, the waters of everlasting life, etc. And that they go back to heaven when they're done being on the earth. So they return a really far way away to the mouth of the river. They go home. Is so the, but, but the mouth of the river is in heaven or is it on earth? heaven it would be not here at all so the place in heaven right and then they're taken out of that to put back on, on earth what's that because they're they're put in the because these people didn't stay in heaven did they they want i, I don't think story. that people leave heaven except for angels collecting people in end times other than that people don't leave heaven okay all right. Unless you mean the spirit when it first gets flesh, then it's leaving heaven, quote unquote. So they exist the first on heaven and then they get put on earth. It, I missed the first word of that, that first sentence. They, 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 they exist first in heaven. Is that what you said? Uh huh. Oh, yeah. Uh huh. But not, not with flesh. Korag has asked, Richard or said, Richard is the third rare theist that regularly is actually honest and says it seems to me or in my or opinion. in my opinion yeah no i i, I can I, you can see your honesty like you, you can when you talk to when when we talk to you you can see that you're fully honest with you like i see that I, what i see the train of thought on, on this side of the conversation is trying to see how you make like, how you get there right you, you understand like it's like we would and it's kind of hard, hard to follow you sometimes but like for me, right? Because like, because of the whole the beginning, right? When you, like, I'm still struggling to understand the amount of the river. Don't feel and bad. Then, I am too. Yeah, I'm yeah. still struggling. Yes, but you have um, you have an interpretation of it. You understand? The, it's, it's like a very solid interpretation. Like, the I, the yeah, interpretation I, I've adopted. Um, it actually had predictive power within the Bible when I'd never read it in my life. I knew things I was going to find later, mm -hmm. even though I hadn't read it. And, and lots of things like that, you know, um, Could that be, I've, just, I've become convinced it's the right way to read it. I have I have a similar thing that happens to me with comic books. 
Like not, oh. not trying to dismiss the whole thing. I read a lot of comic books. I have read Marvel since 1966. And right. I have read it all the way to like now. Like a Spider-Man has go to like so many transformations that like but I, I read so many hero journeys. Oh, that's really entertaining. <laughs> oh. No, <laughs> Oh, uh, sorry. No, go no, on ahead. I get into it. Like, I, I get to finish the story. <laughs> no, but you're talking about getting a feel for it, and because of your feelings about it, you can accurately predict things that will happen, which maybe the writer mm -hmm. hasn't even written it yet. Yeah, that's interpretations. You can get like it's, it's just like guessing the ending to something. Yeah, you I... understand. And then like, and then you like you'll be like in a in a Spider-Man story. I can guess the ending like every other time, and these are. It's scriptures, right? So they yeah. do kind of like follow a pattern. I that's totally that's what I was going with. Uh, making a personal reference point to that, the reason that I called us uh, Universe Earth and uh, is because of Dragon Ball Z, that we are Universe <laughs> 7 in the multiverse. And a particular person on YouTube making a reference point to what uh, Santi just said actually called something out that could possibly happen. Now, don't get me wrong. He said two or three different things as a possible ending. One of them was uh -huh. quite out there, and that particular ending definitely looks like it's going to fucking happen now. And this guy's been following them and does a channel about them. You know, it, it's his life. So as Santi says, once you follow something that much and you get to see the patterns, you can possibly predict where it's going to go. Yeah, that's that's exactly where I was going with it. Like, wouldn't, that mean, have, hmm? wouldn't that mean you have some understanding of the mind of the writer? No, because they're all by different writers. They're just writing about the same thing. Exactly. Like they, they you know, like I can, I can go where they're gonna go with the story, because I know every detail of the story. Spider-Man, <laughs> and then like you, you can't really make him fly unless you explain it. Like, like, like if if he runs into something, like in a, if you run into a story where there's like superpowers, like a, a drug that gives you superpowers, because the Spider-Man is gonna get superpowers for this one issue. Like and it, and it's like nine out of ten is gonna happen or some sort of mutation, but you can go to like to where that goes, where the writer like it's like where the, how the story develops, the style, the scenarios, and stuff like that changes from the point of view. Of just now the new Spider-Man, right? He's like he, he's completely different from the original, yet very similar, like tragic tragic origin story tragic life pretty much and you know but like he's like you know he's a spider-man but he's a completely different person but the stories always go the same way because they have this one formula you get it like it's not getting on the mind of the writer per se it's more getting on the rhythm of the story that's good for me like you know. no no, no. I, again making a reference point back to dragon ball z they took a 14 year <laughs> break and uh brought back different writers that were put in the universe of that and knowing what previous work the writers had done and how their mm -hmm. style is, even though they weren't there at the start, you could make predictions on what they would do in that universe, if you understand what I mean. Yes, yes. Right, we'll fly through this end wee bit here. Go on, Richard, where are we at? Uh, Utnapishtim said to his wife, mankind is deceptive. Oh. There you go. And will deceive you. Come, bake loaves for him, and keep setting them by his head, and draw on the wall each day that he lay down. She baked his loaves and placed them by his head, and marked the wall the day that he lay down. The first loaf was desiccated, the second stale, the third moist, the fourth turned white. It's the fifth sprouted gray mold, the sixth is still fresh. The seventh, suddenly he touched him, and the man awoke. Gilgamesh said to Utnapishtim, The very moment sleep was pouring over me, you touched me and alerted me. Utnapishtim spoke to Gilgamesh, saying, Look over here, Gilgamesh, count your loaves. You should be aware of what is marked on the wall. Your first loaf is desiccated, the second stale. The third moist, your fourth turned white. It's, why is the same one missing twice? The fifth sprouted gray mold and the sixth is still fresh. And saying that the, the, reason, seventh. the reason it could be missing twice is because it's a definitive line. It's got a distance from left to right or right to left, whatever they read. And if a corner broke off, 
you would yeah i think you're right that they don't write left to right like we do but. well left to right right to left whatever it is if you break a chunk off the end of it you're going to lose the last sentence of every you know the last few words of every sentence and mm -hmm. like they're definitive lines the fifth sprouted gray mold the sixth is still fresh the seventh suddenly touched him and the man awoke and gilgamesh said to Udnapishtim, page 48 we will never know what good in the him it was dun, told dun, by dun, dun. <laughs> not to next week we will wait to next week we will <laughs> <highlight this. laughs> uh, do you know we got through three pages in in uh close to two hours we get through two pages <laughs> that's pretty good three pages sorry three pages <laughs> <laughs> It's not a speed reading contest. I mean, I went, I go to Bible studies, or I have gone to Bible studies. I quit doing it, and the people are like trying to read the whole Bible in one year, and they're just like, <laughs> never talk about it, don't think about it, just read it fast as you can. I just, <laughs> well, I, just, I, I think that, that definitely applies to the begats. Read the begats if you're going to fucking be particular. Not that we are here. To you, bro. Well, in saying that I series two, we just highlighted gi giant chunks of fucking the show that we did not read. It's right <laughs> there, a whole list of begats. Go make me read. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for him. <laughs> hey, Matt. <laughs> Matt, have I ever read begats to you? <laughs> Sandy, thanks very much for coming tonight. <laughs> Thank you for having me. <laughs> no, this was a lot of fun. It's definitely good to get another point of view, and I think we can bounce back and forth. And I think as well, uh, you know, when I try and put something across to Richard, sometimes he doesn't... I, I, without trying to see rude, he doesn't get the point that I'm trying to say. But... I just happen to be one. Pardon, Richard? <laughs> I said not that it's a bad thing to be a retarded person. I just happen to be one. No. You know? I just... no. No. Everybody no, has no, their feelings. Good. Look at me with English, you know? Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't English. mean him. I mean me. Like, I, didn't, I didn't say yes as in you're failing with English. That's oh, no, no. Proof. Clearly, I cannot <laughs> spell. Man, I, whenever I was setting up Discord servers before helping people with OBS, I mis misspelled theist and the atheist. I switched the I and the E round, and I must have made about 15 Discord servers. And uh, never bothered changing the original spelling from the clone. And all of a sudden, somebody... Be, uh, not English pig. That's... <laughs> Just what is an, an auth... I can't even say it. Uh, Thigh-est. An auth I, I I wouldn't say, go so far as saying I'm dyslexic, but when I type fast and I speak fast, sometimes I make mistakes. Like Only yesterday I typed type T-P-Y-E. You know, it's small things every now and again. It just happens, you know. But anyway, not I, I that we need to my... drag on and ramble. Richard, <laughs> wonderful episode tonight. I think this is the longest one we've had for Series 3. Uh, okay. We will officially blame Santi. Right on. Uh, on that note as well, mentioning Santi. Santi has recently become a Patreon. I want to shout out to all my Patreons there. They're in the list. Uh, it's all been done up quite recently, so there's new benefits and things like that. And uh, yeah, Santi pays me money. One of the reasons why he's here tonight. You get these benefits. Look at all these wonderful things you get. And uh, <laughs> yeah, personalized video it. messages. Uh, we're not even going to talk about what I have planned for I'm in a box, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> oh, Actually, Richard, it's not like that. It's not like that. And putting your fingers in your ears doesn't really work when your headphones are bone connectors. You know, it doesn't make a difference at all. You can hear perfectly. <laughs> uh, Richard, have you any wonderful yeah. interviews coming up on your channel? Other than the one that you're going to plan with Santi, have you any other wonderful interviews coming up on your channel uh, in the next wee while? Well, actually, at 7 o'clock Mountain Time, myself and Dry Apologist. Right, whenever he comes back. Oh, it's Dry. Oh, that's why I was wondering Dry why. Dry Apologist and I will be having a show tonight. Actually, so 730, sorry, 730 Mountain? No, 7 o'clock Mountain Time. Yeah, so 7 o'clock Mountain is, five of, uh, sorry, is 9 Eastern, yes? Yes, that would be 9 Eastern. 9 Eastern and fucking 1 in the morning for all of us over here in the UK. 
You can watch it as a rerun. It won't be that bad. It would be very exciting. <laughs> Santi, have you anything coming up? Be into like that. Uh, well, the channel, uh, I'm organizing a little tournament of D&D, PvP, and then I'm scheduling very soon as, uh, an interview with uh, my first atheist, which is, uh, you know, like it, that one's going to be in Spanish, and then at some point, like we're richer, if you be so kind to grant me a little interview, you know, not like a debate, just like, you know, like no, kind of like just I talking. don't do debates. I only yeah. do conversations, brother, and I'd, I'd love to have you on. I'd love to be on your channel as well. That's not true, Richard. My second most viewed perfect, video on perfect. my channel is uh, you versus Richard, or you versus uh, your wonderful friend, Asshole104. Darth, Darth Dawkins? No, a, yeah, Asshole104. That's that's the only recognition he's going to get. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I've got Cynthia debate, McDonald though, really. tomorrow. If anyone has seen Cynthia McDonald uh, over on Be Mindful's channel uh, with Robert Reed, they do a show once a week there as well. Shout out from Be, Be Mindful, which is now The Family. That the channel's called The Family. And uh, yeah, she'll be coming on tomorrow at 5 Eastern, 10 UK, and that'll be three mountain time, I think. And that's the family spelled P H because that girl's fancy. Yeah, she. <laughs> that's right. Oh uh, no, a lot of love for Beth. A lot of love for Beth. Right. Well, yeah. on that note, uh, Richard, thank you very much. Santi, thank you very thank much. You. I had a lot of fun tonight. We might bring Santi back next week. I don't know. We'll see oh, how yeah. it goes. That you know? I, I, I would love to, and I will practice my pronunciation. Oh, no, man. No, <laughs> you're doing well. You're doing well. And at least you turned up on a Ramones top and not a Justin Bieber t-shirt, so we're fucking landed. <laughs> right, right. I don't even I, like I, the Ramones, but at least I, they're better than I had Justin this since Bieber. High school. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, on that note, we will... Uh, I'm, I'm going to send you some thumbtacks, though. Thumbtacks? Santi, I'm going to send you some thumbtacks for your backdrop. Oh yes! Awesome, awesome. What? Right. Push pins like little nails. Would you yeah. let me end up? Nobody wants to hear about these fucking things. Would you let me finish so we can talk about this offline? Right, everybody. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> thank you very much for coming. Uh, one more thing. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Again, shout out to my Patreons. Thank you, Santi. Thank you, Brainbug. Thank you, Mama, Sammy, Geo. <laughs> You know, everybody there thanks for eyes for empties for the background music you know it, the channel wouldn't be what it would be without the input that people you know help me with this it's just yeah Wait, I, gotta, I gotta give special thanks to somebody i have to interrupt you for just a moment special thanks to sandra who <laughs> sandra 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 that's the oh, right first name right my mother yes my mother turned up tonight at the very start Yes, Special Sandra. To her. We call it Sandra. It'll not be Sandra tomorrow because she's going to come back into my live chats. We need to change her surname because uh, she's fucking doxing me by coming in. Love you, mummy. <laughs> but uh, we're going to give you a new YouTube name. We're going to call you Pork Grandma. So <laughs> Pork Grandma. <laughs> I just came up with the assassin. <laughs> Everybody, thank you very much for coming. I will oink and we will out. <laughs>